Well, going back to the topic of greed, how did, you know, how the term yuppie was sort of coined in the 80s and sure. all the gentrification going on in New York City, probably around that time. Yeah, exactly. I don't know Yuppies, BMWs, all that, yeah. Right, and a lot of people being forced out of apartments and things like that. Did that, growing up as a kid and seeing some of that, did that shape you at all? I know you were more on... Well, it's funny. It, it, when I think of the movie I just did now is all about how polarized we are and how we shouldn't be. And in a weird way, it was the beginning of us being a little bit polarized. It's funny because in my dorm, I had like weird art I found on the street and my roommate uh, who went on to be um, pretty staunch Republican had um, Ronald Reagan as a cowboy, Alf, a poster of money <laughs> and a bottle of Jack Daniels. But um, it, 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 but it, at the time it was, I'm going to get into the polarization. It was like you can have different things you lean towards, but we could all talk. And and what's really hard for me right now, and, and I, I do want to talk about it because it's super important to the movie. I think I might have made one of the most important movies I've made thus far is since 9-11, I've been seeing the world just got really polarized. And not just, I travel a, a lot. I thought first it was in our country. Every country is super polarized. People are going far right far left um, and it's getting very tribal and it's losing everything that I think that's important. To me, the most important things are honesty and integrity. And I think in the hope to fight for your side, people are willing to look the other way at, at things that are wrong. They're willing to lie. They're willing to embellish the truth. and. I think when that happens, we're just going to fall apart as, as you know, as a civilization. And I am super worried about that um, because I do think that it's irrational. Uh, we're allowing irrational behavior. We're we're not um, making people accountable for when they do something wrong. And you know, if you talk about like whatever in politics, it's like if you say, well, Donald Trump, it's not right that he did that, and instead of saying yeah, it's not right, you shouldn't do that. They go, but Hillary did that. And it's like, it, they're two separate stories. Maybe what he did was wrong and maybe what Hillary did was wrong. The point is, we need to focus on what's right and wrong. Um, and so that has just gotten worse and worse. And I love technology. I think the internet has the ability, it, had the, it sort of backfired on us just in that People are losing empathy for each other because when we sit across from each other and have an argument and I say something and I see your emotion and I see your hurt, I will, as a human being, react to that and be like, wow, that wasn't really right what I said. That was a little bit crazy. On the internet, there's no face and people tend to just not listen to the other side. They just want to get out what they want to say and it just gets meaner and meaner. And I love technology and I wouldn't want to take it away. I just think we need to evolve as humans to be more empathetic without seeing someone's face and be more open to the fact that we may be wrong sometimes and ultimately just be, uh, um, to be more effective, like we need to listen to each other and, and not get so polarized. And the 24 hour news cycle didn't help that. Um, and it's gotten just worse because, you know, whichever way you lean, it seemed like Fox started from my perspective. And then I, I, I watch a lot of the new shows I've always watched and it's so reactionary now that it's almost escalating. And it's like, I just kind of wish there was just the news, uh, just facts and, 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 and yeah, it's been concocted into this crazy world and, and, and it's hard to go home during um, the holidays and, and sit around the table with people that have opposite opinions. We literally, in my home have brought up like no politics at the table. And I'm smart. sometimes we go into it and then it's like we all go, all right, we love each other. And let's not talk about that. So I, I, the movie I just made is called Hot Air. I was uh, had this idea for a while in my head and um, that we need to fix this. And um, a script got sent to my manager and she sent it to me, uh, Ali Idri, and it was uh, called Hot Air. And um, my producing partner, Amy Keene, read it and she was like, wow, Frank, this is what you've been talking about. But it's a beautiful little small story. Uh, and she knew I wanted to go back and make an indie because my first movie was an indie and we can get into that in a little bit. Um, and I read this story and it was a beautiful story about 
just a small family drama. It just happened to be that the lead was a right wing talk show host, a la you name, you know, Rush Limbaugh, whoever. Um, and his niece comes into his life that he had never met from his estranged sister who he hated. And um, she's about to go into foster care because her mom's gonna go into rehab. And she sort of inserts herself in his life and he wants to have nothing to do with her. And she's as clever as him and says, well, if you uh, put me back into foster care, you're gonna, I'm gonna tweet a message saying, you're putting me back into the social services that you rag on all the time. You know, and then he realizes this niece is really smart. And the movie's about the two of them going head to head. And, you know, it's not like at the end of the movie he becomes a liberal and, you know, but by the end of the movie, he becomes a better human by listening to her. And everyone in the movie shifts just a little bit and they're able to communicate. And, and that, the goal of the movie was to make a movie that you can see this movie with your Republican or your liberal or your conservative family and you can all go together and you can come home and be like, all right, I'll listen to what you have to say this time. So I, it seems to have been getting that kind of response that's coming out this weekend. So I'm excited to see if it affects people in the way that I hope it does. Even if it's a few people, it'll be great. Did you used to watch a lot of the 90s talk shows? You remember like somebody would get up in front of Geraldo or Jerry Springer and it was calm for a little bit and then the first one stood up <laughs> and threw the first rock and then it was on. I kind of was like one of those guys that was like anti that. Oh, you were? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I found them fascinating. And uh, I, I just remember a story because um, Juliette Lewis had done a movie with Adam and she used to watch them all day and just imitate people. And then you realize how she's so good at doing that. <laughs> just a little offshoot, a little side shoot. Um, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of those shows. I, 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 they just kind of bugged me because I felt like they were just cashing in on people's, um, they're just pushing buttons and, you know, and it was like watching a, a train crash. You can't turn the other way, but I was able to turn the other way. So that wasn't my thing. I loved Letterman. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I love things like humor. that. I like that yeah. he was not. A, I like that he was not always soft on everyone. That's true. I always like that he would either like somebody and be cool with them, and if he didn't like them, he would. He would needle them a little. Yeah, he's yeah, good at yeah, that. But he would yeah. do it with with a little bit with of humor. class yeah. and, 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 and and dignity and all those nice things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just was curious if the sort of the evolution of those those talk shows has now turned into people in comments and, and how we I think are. it has. Look, it, it, you know, it, it all goes back to me to integrity. It's because like you read a headline and it's like the headline is just to like exacerbate something or just inflame and, and you realize they just want to click and it's it's we're in this just get do anything for attention even at the expense, you know, like sometimes the headline's just misleading and then the misleading headline becomes what everybody talks about and it creates rumors you know what I mean? It's like, so I just think people have to have integrity. If you just, that's the bottom line. Integrity includes honesty, uh, you know, uh, uh, treating people fairly. It's like, if everyone had integrity, it would be such a nicer world. And, and we used to have more and we're having less now. It was never perfect. And we're always a work in progress. Um, but I feel like this whole idea of being a work in progress is, is almost thrown out the window. I mean, I'm going to just tangent into guns and it's like we have all these problems with people wanting gun control and other people saying, well, they're going to take guns away and and like, look, it's never going to be perfect, but we have a problem. And what always made America a great country is we would work on fixing the problem. You know, I think I think it was like Trevor and I was talking about like we had problems with cars. So then you put, you know, you make people wear seatbelts and you create rules and like and that's what made this country great. and and and. I feel like now we're not willing to even, because people are taking such sides, we're not even willing to work on fixing it, even if it's baby steps. And, 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 and that's, you know, I get, I'm getting into all these social issues because I'm a filmmaker and it's starting to become so important uh, to me that we start fixing some of these things because I just feel like it doesn't feel like it's going to be a great world in 20, 30, 40 years. And I don't have kids yet. I want to have kids and my friends have kids. And I'm just like, I want to do it for them. <laughs> sure.